Women's cyclocross nowadays rightfully enjoys a stature that is equal, sometimes even greater than the stature of the men. But only a little over 20 years ago, that stature was very, very different. Today we'll follow the story of one of the most important figures in creating that stature. A woman who is pivotal in creating those first steps into full-on equality. Today we talk about none other than Hanka Kupfernagel. Hanka Kufenagel was born on the 19th of March 1974 in Gera, at the time part of East Germany. She would grew up in a cycling family in the nearby town of Neustadt an der Orla, starting her cycling career in 1985, when an 11 year old Hanka would compete in a small race in the local village of Knau, immediately finishing on the podium. Two years later Hanka would be recruited into the nearby Sportsgemeinschaft Wismut Gera, a performance centre run by the sports leadership of the GDR, focusing on boxing and cycling, with intent of promoting competitive sports and creating successful athletes. During her time at the school she would train daily on the track, on the road and in the winter she would often ride cross. Over her teenage years she would hone her skills across all disciplines, becoming an incredibly versatile talent. That versatile talent would first be noticed in Athens in 1992. 1992 is the year Kufenagel truly exploded onto the radar of anyone involved with any discipline of cycling at the time. Having finished second in the individual pursuit at the Junior Worlds in 1991, she aimed to go one better a year later in Athens, in Greece. Again racing the individual pursuit, Hanka would claim a very first world title at any level, becoming the junior world champion in the discipline. She wouldn't waste much time adding more rainbow bands either. Where the 1992 Junior Women's Road World Championships were held I frankly do not know. Some places say Olympia in Greece, some say an unknown location in the UK, some places say Benidorm where the men's were. What we do know is that Hanka Kupfenagel was the winner beating the likes of Marilyn Salvata and Diana Tilute to take a second junior rainbow jersey. Over the course of the 90s she'd prove herself to already be amongst the strongest cyclists in the world. In the Isle of Man in 1994 she'd become the under 23 European champion. Hanka would also take the overall of the elite stage race Gracia Olova in the Czech Republic three years in a row. She'd also win the Tour de Pologne Feminine. In 1998 she would take two bronze medals from the Road Worlds in the Dutch Valkenburg, finishing third in both the elite time trial and road race. In 99 Hanka would deliver her biggest win to date, La Fleche Wallonne, winning at the highest level for the very first time. Now you may be starting to wonder, that's a lot of road results, where does the cyclocross come in? And all I can really tell you is that women's cross in the 90s was a very, very barren place. Embarrassingly so in fact. In all the research I've done I've not been able to find any verifiable, factual data of any cross races outside of the Dutch national championships. But in the new millennium a new dawn started for women in cross. And it started in a small village in the south of the Netherlands. It would only take 9 days of the 21st century for Hanka Kupfenagel's fortune regarding official competitions to change, as on the 9th of January of the year 2000, the very first German cyclocross championships for elite women were held in Frankfurt. Over the 47 minute race Hanka would dominate, winning the race by over 3 minutes ahead of cross country mountain biker Regina Marunde. Two weeks later another first was on the horizon, the UCI had finally caved to the pressure from the women's peloton and had sanctioned the organisation of a world championships for women, exactly 50 years after the inaugural men's edition in Paris 1950, St Michels Gestel 2000 would host women for the first time and Kupfernagel was amongst the major favourites, the other being Dutch rider Daphne van den Brandt. 
On the 29th of January, 65 women from across the globe set off on the very first World Championships. None would be able to do anything about the German though. Gufenagel would dominate the race from the very start. Behind Britain's Louise Robinson and the aforementioned Van den Brandt would try to chase but struggle to stay within a minute of the German. After 42 minutes of gruelling racing, we had our very first female cyclocross world champion. She came from Germany and her name was Hanka Kupfernagel. Unfortunately, she wouldn't get to show off her rainbow jersey a huge amount, races still being very few and far between. In the following season, she would once more only have two officially verifiable creditable races, the National and World Championships. The German title was once more a walkover, and in a frozen Tabor, her biggest rivals would be the Dutch, namely once more Van den Brandt, but also BMX legend Corinne Dorland. The competition would be closer than the previous year, but Hanka would once again be the strongest, taking a second world title, and in the 0203 season, she would finally get to actually show that off a little. Whilst there was no official competition yet, the World Cup rounds of Frankfurt and Wetzikon did organise official women's races. Whilst the stature of women's cross was starting to grow, so was the field, and so was Van den Brandt, the young Dutch woman starting to find her stride, and a battle would start to emerge between Kupfernagel and the Dutch woman. In both World Cup races, Kupfernagel would end up having to settle for second. Between those two races, the German champions took place, and again here, Hanka would finish second, losing the title for the very first time to Birgit Hallmann. Combining the road, cross, track and the odd mountain bike competition was starting to catch up with the double world champion. At the Worlds in Monopoli in 2003, Hanka's season of seconds would be completed, as Van den Brandt took a first rainbow jersey in a two-up sprint in Italy. Having lost the world title, Hanka had some revenge to get, and the following season would see an ideal place for that revenge to be manifested. Whilst the year 2000 may be the biggest year in women's cyclocross, 2003 sure does come close, as the first ever World Cup for women was organised, consisting of the same six rounds as the men did. For the first time, women had a season-long competition. The very first round was held on the 26th of October 2003 in Torino in Italy. Try as I might, I wasn't able to find any footage of the race itself, though I do know that it was at least created and is likely on some back catalogue for Sparza or the Belgian television somewhere. On the day though, once again it was Kupfernagel who would have to settle for a second place. In an intriguing five-way battle, Van den Brandt would win once again. The two giants of the sport would be joined on the podium by a potential third, a 16-year-old kid, a 16-year-old kid called Mariana Vos. What followed were rounds in St. Vendel, Vetsikon, Coxade and Nome, and Hanka would dominate all four, coming into the final round with over 100 points in her lead over Mariana Vos and over the French Marine in Salvatin, guaranteeing herself the honour of the first Women's World Cup, alongside that already won very first world title. The final round in Beinacker was a victory lap for Kupfernagel, a victory lap where she'd finished second as Voss became the youngest World Cup winner of all time, a record that still stands to this day. Alongside the World Cup overall, Hanka would also claim the very first elite European title in cyclocross flat out, beating Mariana Voss and Salvatin in Tabor. The German national title would also be reclaimed, however a first ever Grand Slam would not quite be achieved because at the Worlds in Pont Chateau, the French ran riot on their home soil. Behind the duo of Laurence Leboucher and Marilyn Salvatin, Kufenagel would finish third, keeping her record of consistent world championship podiums going, but again missing out on the rainbow jersey. Despite a strong 2004 road season, including a second place at La Flèche Wallonne, by the start of 2005, Hanka was starting to suffer from the symptoms of a burnout that would remain undiagnosed until the summer of that same year. 
In her final cross season before taking a large break, Hanka would race 13 times, taking 12 podiums and 9 wins. These wins included another German title, two World Cup rounds and a second European title. The big goal for Kupfernagel this year would be successfully reclaiming her world title, especially with the Worlds held in the German Sank Wendel. On the day, nobody would even come close to Hanka Kupfernagel. Fellow German Sabine Spitz would be the nearest, the only rider within half a minute in fact, as Kupfernagel dominated, becoming the first woman to hold three world titles and being undoubtedly the best in the world once again. Despite her third world title and her stellar performances, 2005 would not be a great year for Hanka Kufenagel. Competing at the highest level in multiple cycling disciplines throughout the entire year was starting to cause continual growing stress, eventually manifesting itself in the form of a burnout. This left Hanka out of competition during the summer. As the cross season returned, so did Hanka. Her first race back would be the International Women's Cross in Berlin, where she'd be victorious. Throughout the season, she would suffer from another issue, one that many women in cross have struggled with, the Dutch. Van den Brandt pulled off an unprecedented perfect run in the World Cup, winning all seven rounds, and in the Euros and the Worlds, a certain Mariana Vos was starting to come through properly too, the youngster sprinting to both titles. The following 06-07 season was once more similar. Hanka would take four World Cup wins this year, but miss out on the European and World titles, and there wasn't an overall title this year, because the UCI decided not to award one, for some bizarre reason. The tussle between Van den Brandt, Vos and Kufenagel would keep going. However, as Van den Brandt was in her mid-twenties, Vos was still only 19, Hanka Kufenagel was now in her mid-thirties, and her career was starting to wind down. Not that it would slow her amount of racing down at all. 2007 would continue at the same pace. She'd finished sixth in the opening World Cup of the season in Milan, one of only two times she'd missed the podium. She'd take two more World Cup wins and another German title, somewhat expected returns by now. She'd win in Lunhout during the first GVA Trophy for women, before heading off to Treviso in Italy, for a crack at the World Championships, once more. We go to the last right line, on 200 meters from the streep. Here is for the fourth time in the history of the World Championship for the women, Anka Koepfernagel. It is for the ninth time that she does in the WK Cross. For the fourth time that she will win. In die negen jaar haalde ze maar één keer het podium niet. Koep voor Nagel, baas van de tweede tot de laatste ronde. Zij en zij alleen verdient die titel. Goed gemaakt, Anka. A fourth world title. No woman was even close to her. God, only five men had ever achieved that feat, and they've had half a century more to get there. It's a truly incredible achievement. Her final year in the rainbow jersey would probably be considered her final year at the very top level, taking two more World Cup wins in the rainbow jersey and winning the overall for a second time alongside another German title and a third European title that would round off her international accolades. As the era of Mariana Vos took hold, the era of Kupfernagel and Van den Brandt would slowly slip away. Hanka settling for second in a sprint in the World Championships in Hoge Heide, as she'd done so three years prior in Zedong. Hanka though never really retired, she's always kept racing even now well into her 40s. In early 2010 she'd take her final world's podium with one more silver medal, three more German titles have followed in the time. The final victory of Hanka's career would come in the 15-16 season where she'd win the Swiss crosses of Ilnau and Steinmauer definite classics in their own right. These final wins coming some 17 years after her first cross victory and some 20 after her first elite victories outright show the brilliant longevity of her career. In the years since her retirement, Hanka has kept riding and kept racing whenever she felt like it, 
even competing in the national championships as recently as 2019. Hank has also been involved in cycling off the bike. In 2018, she was appointed to the role of Commissaris for that year's Deutschland Tour, becoming the first woman to ever hold that position in a UCI race. Throughout her decade-spanning career, Hanka amassed 77 victories, which, considering the lack of races throughout most of her career, is a truly mesmeric number, winning across every year between 1999 and 2014. The lack of a trophy, and notably a super prestige for women, means that she only has 5 trophy wins, and technically zero in the super prestige. She did win a race in Havre though, before the women's super prestige was officially formed. The World Cup however existed for most of Hanka's senior career, and she proves that by storming to 17 victories, an amount bettered only by Vos, Van der Brandt and Katie Compton. Impressive considering during the first 7 years or so of her career, there was no World Cup. As far as international prizes are concerned, Hanka has 4 world titles, an amount bested only by Mariana Vos's 8. Hanka is the first ever women's world champion, the first to hold multiple titles. She is also the most recent of 4 Germans ever to be world champion, alongside 3 time world champion Rolf Walzhol, 2 time world champion Klaus Peter Thaler, and 1 time world champion Mike Kluge. Hanka also has 3 European titles, including the first 2 elite titles ever awarded. Only Van den Brandt's four betters her, across both men's and women. Sanne Kant and Mathieu van der Poel both have three each. Finally, she also has an incredible 13 German titles to her name, over half the women's titles ever awarded. All in all, a truly ridiculous palmares for a cyclist who was truly ridiculous. Hanka Kufenagel might well be the most complete all-round rider imaginable. She holds world titles on the track, on the road and in cross, as well as being a multiple-time national mountain bike champion. There was simply nothing Kufenagel was not amongst the best at, and that's in every single discipline. Her many exploits on the track and the road gave her an engine that only few could compete with in cross. She would build on this massive engine with a very solid technical foundation too, creating a very complete and all-round experienced crosser. Simply the fact that she's the first female cross world champion would place Hanka Kufenagel as a legend in cross, but alongside that she has another three world titles, three European titles, two World Cup victories and so many other wins across the years. She's the first dominant woman in cross. She's the one who paved the way for everybody afterwards and absolutely one of the greatest crossers of all time. <laughs>